All right, everybody, welcome to the Thursday live stream. We got a lot of things to cover, so let's just jump right in. We're going to talk about this uh, pretty massive rumor that Bitcoin could become a strategic reserve of the United States, and this may be actually announced at the Bitcoin conference, which will be next week. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about BlockFi paying back its customers. We're going to talk about Mt. Gox and how I think it's pretty much a big nothing burger. And lastly, we'll talk about tons. So let's just jump right in. So this was, take this with a grain of salt. It's a rumor. It's a big rumor, but it's still a rumor. And I wouldn't really talk about it too much <clears throat> unless I saw it from a source that I totally trust. And this is from Simon Dixon. I've known Simon now for a couple of years or so. I met him graciously over at the uh, uh, Coin Bureau event in the UK. This was uh, last year. Great guy. He has had his pulse on what is going on. And also, you know, he's been a uh, early Bitcoin investor, big Bitcoin bull, and uh, one of the guys that I, I like to talk to and respect. And he doesn't usually just pull out these, you know, clickbait type of posts. This is probably something that he has learned along the way. And it's not just Simon. We've heard, I've seen it from a lot of different sources. So again, take it with a grain of salt. But it does make sense, especially with what uh, Trump has been saying. And he states this, getting more and more confirmation that these rumors may be true. Trump to announce a USA Bitcoin strategic reserve in Nashville, which will be next week. I think his keynote speak is on Friday. Correct me in the comment section. Could be Saturday. I'm not for sure. So first of all, before we dig into this and talk about the pros and cons and everything else, I want to make something extremely clear. I, I know that people hate Trump. And I know that people love Trump. I know that people hate Joe Biden. I know that people love Joe Biden. I know that people, well, I can't say people hate Robert F. Kennedy. Robert F. Kennedy, everybody's RK Jr., people seem to love him. Doesn't really matter where we're at, but I understand what it is. You have to get behind this rumor and to say, if this actually is announced, which arguably may or may not be, if this is actually announced in Nashville, Tennessee, and even if Trump doesn't win, and even if he doesn't push this forward, the agenda or the genie is out of the bottle. We are talking about this with a presidential candidate. He may not win. And we're going to talk about why I don't think he's going to win a little bit. But even if he puts that out there, the question you have to ask yourself is, that's, does that make sense? Could we actually do that? And if he's actually putting it out there, then why isn't my candidate, if your candidate is Joe Biden, uh, why isn't he talking about that? And why isn't he putting that out there to actually back up the U.S. dollar? And then also, of course, with RFK, the question you have to ask yourself is, would he do that? I can tell you, I think he would. So when we're taking a look at this, again, it's a rumor. I will be at a uh, Bitcoin conference, come up and say hi, and uh, we'll see how it comes out. But I had to ask myself, like, what does this actually mean as having a strategic reserve of Bitcoin by the United States? And it's essentially just what gold would have done back in the early days before President Nixon, Nixon took us off the gold standard. It would essentially be a strategic portion that the U.S. government would buy Bitcoin and store it to have it to actually back that up uh, in case of economic turmoil. And I had to ask the question to ChatGPT and say, well, what does this mean? Because there's, there's things that I probably wouldn't think about, and there's a lot actually. So if this actually does happen, think of it this way. Now the U.S. government owns Bitcoin, so they're going to have to have cold storage solutions. They could either make themselves or they could just say, hey, we know that with the ETF, you know, Jamie Dimon or JP Morgan, uh, they're doing something like that with uh, with custody also, or of course with Coinbase as well, I would say. So they can either do it one of the, those two ways. The second thing you have to think about is this, if they start to own Bitcoin, now you have to get federal agency oversight. So the different agencies are gonna have to come out and come together. I think the SEC has already said that it is a commodity. So the CFTC would actually regulate that and we'd actually get that into a regulatory framework. And then the next question is, well, how are they going to purchase it? Are they going to mine it? Are they going to purchase it? They could be an OTC type of thing where they wouldn't actually disrupt the market. Probably, but direct purchases is retail, obviously not. And the next big thing is this. If this actually happens, because Trump has actually said before, like, hey, I would like to uh, have Bitcoin solely mined in the United States, which when he first said that, we know that can't happen, you know, as much as we'd like to try. Uh, but he said now recently in the last two days that I'd like it, I'd like America to mine the most amount of Bitcoin in the world and not let it pass over. So the question then you have to ask yourself is this, if that's the case, now does the government get into the Bitcoin mining operation? They could, especially if it is uh, some type of national security type of issue. And then it goes through purpose and utilization. 
economic stability, national security, wouldn't that be something? Public reports and audits, of course, we would uh, hopefully have that, but uh, who knows? And again, ethical and legal framework. So a whole host of litany of things to actually go through with this. But the question is this, if this happens, how far away are we? Well, I think we can understand now why Trump came out and said, hey, Jamie Dimon has changed his tune to Bitcoin. And why is that? Well, probably because he talked to Trump and said, this is what we want to do, if that is true. So things are trying to come together. And that's all great. And that's all moon boyish and fantastic, right? Let's go to reality. So the reality is this. It is a rumor. But if it is a rumor that we, the plebs, let's be honest, none of us are, or very few of us listening right here are a bunch of whales. <laughs> We're plebs. And if that's the case, and Donald talked about this and, and said this is what's going to happen, don't you think that some other big institutions, some other big whales would get in right now and say, wow, if it becomes the national or the reserve currency of the United States, it'll probably push it up to I mean, past 250, 300, maybe half a million per Bitcoin as time goes on. I mean, why wouldn't I get into that? And if we could assume that would be correct, what is the price? The price is down 1% today. So this is just a rumor, but I will play devil's advocate on that side as well. Nobody wants to be first, but nobody wants to be last. First of all, we don't know if Donald Trump's going to win. And we don't even know, and some people that would have heard this in the upper echelon, maybe they are accumulating in the background. Maybe Mr. 100, as James over Invest Answers has, has followed, maybe they knew this the whole time. We don't know. But I can tell you what's happening right now, the snapshot. <laughs> we went from 65,000 to 63,000. And it's just, it's anybody's guess at this point. And the next question is this, because people hear this thing, they're like, this is great, I like this. Especially if, you know, if you're going to vote for Trump. I can't vote for anybody because I'm in, the, I'm in Puerto Rico. That's fine. But the question is, is Trump going to win? And I know a lot of people will say they'll, they'll point at the polls and they'll point at the fact that, you know, the uh, recent assassination attempt and how strong he looked at that point. I will just remind you. Alan Lickman is a professor and he has come out and the last nine out of the last 10 election results has been correct. And he talks about these 13 keys. And what he's saying is if Biden stays in the race, because he's the incumbent, which is one of his keys, he will win this race. We don't know who Alan Lickman is. There he is. Nine out of 10 is pretty damn good. And what he talks about these 13 keys is this. Party mandate. After the midterm elections, the incumbent party holds more seats. No primary contest. That's happening right now. Incumbent seeking re-election. That's happening right now. There's no third party. This is debatable because RFK Jr. is there. Strong short-term economy, that's probably why they are releasing these reports, depending on if you believe those or not, those reports that are coming out. And you can't deny the fact that America is quite resilient. And it goes on a litany of different things. So I link this in the description, you can check this out, or you can just do a, a Google search for the 13 keys. But what Alan Lichtman is saying is like, no, Trump will lose and he will not be the next president of the United States. So if we know that, maybe, que maybe the qu question comes up is, if... Donald Trump says this, will he even be able to do it if he actually wins? And even if he says it, is he actually going to do it? Because let's be honest, politicians are what? They're all liars. I'm not going to sugarcoat that. Let's be honest. And, has, and has, has anybody infallible? No. They make huge mistakes and they make huge promises. And they don't actually talk about them or actually do and actually follow through with them. So well, let's just throw it out there. And the next thing people will say was, wasn't Donald Trump like super against Bitcoin? Yes, he was. But guess who else was super against Bitcoin at one point? Michael Saylor, the biggest bull of all time. He came out in 2013 and said, look, Bitcoin's days are numbered. And then they actually do the research and they say, oh, this is actually pretty good. There's another guy. What's his name? Oh, yeah, Larry Fink uh, from BlackRock. And he was the same way. He'd say, oh, you know what? This is not, excuse me. This is not something that I did enough research and now that I understand, I will dig into it. And uh, I believe it is a flight to safety and a gold standard or a gold 2.0, what do you want to call it? And also there's a video, I link this in the description as well. You can watch this. This is uh, Mark Cuban pretty much talking about how ridiculous and dumb people are <laughs> for buying Bitcoin or any digital assets. And this was just five years ago and now he's a huge Bitcoin bull. 
and digital asset bull. So yes, to say it, to answer the questions, wasn't really too big on it. Yes, it's a rumor. It'd be great if it's true. No, it didn't affect the market. I'm just kind of give everybody a balanced point of view a little bit and go from there. So look, if you like uh, that piece, give it a thumbs up, go from there. But that's what we have. We'll see how it all works out. And then before we get into uh, Mount Gox, just wanted to uh, give a little bit, uh, a little bit of uh, info that came out. Metal Lawman is uh, did a super pack, and we talked about this yesterday, I believe. It's a super pack for John Deaton to uh, offset Senator Elizabeth Warren in Massachusetts, and this was a scoop actually from Eleanor Eleanor Terrett. So that Ripple donated a million dollars, a million dollars to the Commonwealth Unity Fund, a new super PAC set up by Attorney James Murphy. It's a metal lawn man to unseat Senator Warren John Deaton. And right now, there was actually a piece that James just put out and said, hey, there's going to be an even bigger announcement today. So if we get that announcement, I will let you know. But I linked metal lawman's information or his uh, X account as well as uh, Simon Dixon's account in the description. So follow both of those gentlemen to get further updates about what's going on. So that is takes care of the politics side. And I know people say, well, don't talk too much politics because we shouldn't really care. Unfortunately, it's inevitable. And that's all we have. So let's talk about something else, BlockFi. Um, for everybody who was in BlockFi, I'm sorry. It's a uh, bummer. I know that you uh, lost a lot of funds, but good news today, BlockFi just uh, said, hey, distributions will be processed in batches in the coming months, and eligible clients will receive a notification to the BlockFi account email on file. Please note that non-US clients are unable to receive funds at this time due to the regulatory requirements applicable to them. So if you were invested in the BlockFi, had funds on BlockFi, just know it looks like you're going to get your funds back in some way, shape, or form. I linked the official BlockFi account in the description. So follow them for further information. And then lastly, uh, Mt. Gox. We, we talked about this today. It was uh, me, uh, Ben, and the Cryptoverse, and Guy from uh, Coin Bureau. We were talking about Mt. Gox, and I didn't, I don't know if I explained myself uh, adequately enough, but just so you know, I thought this was going to be a bigger deal, but Alex Thorne, who is the uh, uh, head of research over at Galaxy, he laid it all, all out pretty good. Then he said, he said, as a reminder, Mount Gox, you lost almost 1,000 Bitcoin, 940,000 Bitcoin, but they only recovered 15%. That's 141,000 Bitcoin, 15% of the 940. And out of those 15% or 140,000 or so, just know that... Uh, the investors, the new early payout, they had to take a 10% haircut. So that's 75% of those, which leaves about 95,000 coins for early pay. Let's just say 100,000. Let's keep this very simple. So out of the 100,000, 20,000 coins are owed. 10,000 coins are owed to the uh, Bitcoinica BK, leaving 65,000 coins for individual creditors. And he said, look, 65,000 Bitcoin, if they sell them all today or whenever they get dropped, in uh, Kraken or BitGo or Bitstamp, or whatever they're actually coming through, uh, just know that they probably won't sell them all. But if they did sell them all, you're looking at uh, around $4 billion worth, eh, give or take. And if they sold them all, that's $4 billion. Germany just sold over a billion. And yes, it did disrupt the market, but let's just say 10%, that's like half a billion. That's like $400 million worth of sell pressure. Would that be awful? Well, it'd be great but it might be just enough to uh, have a dip and maybe uh, you might want to pick that up, not financial advice. So again, with Mt. Gox, it's 15% of the original. You got 65,000 that are out there. I don't expect it to be a big thing. At some point, people are going to sell. I still say they're going to sell, but I'm interested to think about that in the comment section. And lastly, TonCoin. Now I talk about TonCoin a lot. Well, I don't talk about it a lot as much as I, as much as I uh, should actually. I did a video on why I'm... I'm buying ton coin every single day. There's a link in the description. You can check that out. But just know that now that uh, the Ton Foundation or the Open Network, uh, they've done a bridge with Bitcoin. So now you can move Bitcoin around. This is from Anatoly Makasov. And he says, you can now transfer Bitcoin to Ton and back using Ton Teleport. I got to tell you, 
I like that. We can actually use your Bitcoin to the best of their abilities. This decentralized and secure tech operates without intermediaries or limits. All transactions are executed via smart contracts and verified by 10 blockchains, validators. Store and use Bitcoin on ton is as secure as one of the Bitcoin networks itself, but significantly cheaper and more convenient. So congratulations to Ton Network on top of all the different apps that they're rolling out and all the things they're doing. So I like Ton. That's pretty much why I buy it because they're innovating. We'll see how it works out. But that's it for today. So look, if you like today's video, which I got to tell you, every time I say the word Trump, I lose subscribers, but whatever. Give it a thumbs up, subscribe, all that great stuff.